Name your least three favorite appointments. The dentist, the doctor, or your accountant. Well, if you pick number three, then you wouldn't be wrong unless you listen to this next conversation with my guest, Mark Fishman. I found our conversation to be very engaging. He's not your typical accountant. His areas of expertise and his interests are key to the themes he discusses with me here on this next episode of IRC Wealthcast. IRC Wealth. Take control of your finances and embrace life without worrying about money. All right, welcome back to another episode of IRC Wealthcast. And this is an exciting episode, and I usually don't uh, date the episodes, but it's the first episode that we're recording for 2017. Jody at the helm, uh, so excited to have her back, and we're really pumped up about our slate of guests for you in this new year. Speaking of which, uh, I have with me today someone who is uh, to satisfy SEC compliance, is a client of IRCs and also a very accomplished CPA. His name is Mark Fishman. He is with Kanan David as a partner and has been there since 2005. They are a local firm representing a myriad of areas for the business practitioner. Mark's areas of practice include manufacturing, technology, telecommunications, distribution, entertainers, athletes, and service companies. And he's a partner in charge of the firm's state and local tax practice, which uses the acronym SALT, and has a specialty in multi-tax planning, multi-state tax planning, I should say, tax credits, nexus requirements, sales tax, and ad valorem valorem tax issues. And he advises the firm's clients in international taxation for inbound and outbound transactions. I am out of breath introducing you today, Mark, but I want to say welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited about you coming on board uh, for this conversation. We were talking, uh, Mark and I, just before we started recording today and all the different things that they do. And I think that you're in for a very interesting conversation. Mark has really dug into some interesting ways that you as the business owner as well as I guess we could say the, 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 from the personal standpoint too, but can, yeah, both. yeah right. That's fair to say, uh, can take such amazing advantage or at least understand the advantages that are in front of them for state and local tax positioning here in Georgia. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, lots of little things that people just aren't aware of that when we meet with our clients, we try to bring to their attention and help them see uh, different different things that they're already doing and maybe double dip on what they're doing already for their businesses and then maybe take a credit on top of that to help get the both benefits. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing that, uh, and, and when we had first met, you know, I found interesting that this was a specialty of yours. It's a key differentiator of you and your firm. I, I think that people overlook this in a big way. I don't know, is it just they think about federal positions and they don't think about the things that are available to them out there? What do you see as a as the guiding light for this kind of thing. Yeah, that's um, what we see a lot of. Yeah, People think federal, 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 and that is important. That is a yeah, pretty high right. tax rate. Right. So we don't, we don't want to ignore that. And um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to enter a new president, which is going to change yeah, uh, those right. federal rules again based on his previous uh, yeah. speeches. So you're going to have to deal with that no matter where you are in the country. But states are a little different. People don't think about their states, but here in Georgia, we're 6% on every bit of income. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a sales tax. We have a property tax. We have an inventory tax, liquor tax, you know, car tax. So all of it add up and they add up. And because you pay them at different parts, like your federal tax comes out really once or twice a month. You're going to pay your paycheck. Your federal is going to come out. Your FICA is going to come out. And you don't even think about it after a while until unless some special event happens or you file your tax returns. You know, now that we're in 17, you're going to be filing your 2016 returns. So you're going to think about it. But state never seems to have that impact because you, you pay it. It's only 6%. You don't see the hit as much. And then you don't even realize the sales tax you're paying. You don't realize the property taxes. You just kind of do it. But if you don't know the rules, they can they can add up. And we try to come with our clients and say, look, if we can save you a little bit 
at least a 6% on part of that, then let's do that. We Why gotta, wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is funny. If you think about, just, I think about personal behavior, you know, let's say the, the, the federal returns in front of you, whether you're signing for yourself or your business, and then, uh, oh, yeah, sign this thing too. What's this? Oh, this is the state return. All right, whatever. And then yeah. you, you green light that without ever even thinking, did I really talk about that with my accountant? Or did I ever actually research anything here that I could have taken something back from that? So. We see it all the time. They just blindly will sign it. And they're more concerned looking at the federal numbers, looking at their financials, and they don't pay attention to what comes through on the state. And mm. then there's, they could look and go, what's this other one? It's like, oh, you were in Alabama or you were in North Carolina. And they're like, oh, I didn't even know I was there pretty much. And it's, well, you have Nexus there. So we had to file you there and we explain it to them and then they go forward. So we're, we're trying to bring a little bit more to it. We spent a lot of time researching the laws and some of the little benefits that are out there that states do provide that the federal doesn't that might be helpful. Is there, with, with the uh, internet economy, does that provide additional complexity when you're thinking about state and local taxation? Yes, because now it's easier to take sales all over. Right. So you've got your website and people are Googling you and they wanna buy your product. So you're shipping it to another state. That's not a problem, it's once you start putting people in those other states so if you are growing your business and you put a contract or an employee in new york or california or illinois and now you're making sales there well now you've entered a new realm do you have an income tax issue in there what is that employee doing what is that contractor doing mm -hmm. do you have inventory there do you have assets there do you now have to pay sales tax so when someone from chicago buys your product and you have an employee in illinois and you're doing everything in Georgia, just shipping it there, you now have to look to see if you have to collect Illinois sales tax. And do yeah. you have to file Illinois income tax returns? And if you're a small business and you're an S corp or a partnership, that means you as an individual probably will now have to file an Illinois tax return. All because of one employee and one sale that could taint you for all those activities to be taxed in those wow. other states. Wow. And so, so really, when you consider some of the, if just the outline of what you just talked about there, it even makes a difference as to how you expand, not just in where you want to sell things, but who you're going to have as your agent or representative on the ground, if they're going to be local, because that, that affects things, right? I mean, if our clients come to us, we try to enforce on them that as they have employees and they are doing things in other states. I don't mean if someone just gets to your website and they order something from Illinois and you ship them the widgets Yeah, and that's it. You're probably pretty safe. You don't have an excess. You don't have anything. Someone just used the internet to buy your product. But if you're going to that next level and you're going to start expanding and start looking at people and inventory and warehouses and contractors. You're dropping are, a pin now. You're you dropping are. a pin on the map now. Yeah. That's you are. And states are getting more and more aggressive. And all of a sudden, you don't even think you have an issue. And you send a 1099 to an individual who lives in L.A. year later, you get a love letter from the state of California <laughs> saying, hey, we think you have Nexus and you should have filed in California. And they're probably right. Yeah. And you should have collected sales tax. So now you've done all these sales in California you didn't know about. Now you might have to pay sales tax. You didn't file an income tax return, and a state like California has a flat $800 fee just for being in their state. Yeah. And you haven't paid welcome. that. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Please yeah. pay us $800. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. So just by doing that, you're, you're starting these triggers that you didn't even do. You didn't do it intentionally. You didn't know any better. No one's blaming you. It wasn't your fault, but you did it. Yeah. And now you've opened a little Pandora's box that, you know, how do we close it or how do we address it and how do we prevent any problems going forward? Yeah, no, I, I, lo I love this part of the conversation because we do have a lot of solopreneurs and uh, small business owner types and folks with internet footprints that, you know, that we service. And I guarantee you that when, you know, you come in with the rose colored glasses, right? I've got this idea, I'm doing this thing. And now all of a sudden, you know, I'm the only person there that set the controls. All things are breaking loose. It's fun, and I'm gonna, you know, have a partner. I just took a partner on in California, and they live there, and we're making all these great sales. And ouch! One year later, you know, they're knocking at your door, and you have a potential liability and a sizable one at that. And when cash flow is really king in a young business, it could really crush you. Absolutely, and you're not 
you, you're not planning for it. And it's yeah. like, hey, my old college roommate's going to do this. And now he lives right. in California right. and we're going to partner up, but we're going to do everything here. He's just going to loan, give me some money and he's going to help market a little bit out there. But right. essentially we're doing it in Georgia, so I don't have to worry about it. Wrong. You do yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, but you totally did it unintentionally and no one's faulting you. It's just growth. But that's the, yeah. And that's the game board that you're playing on. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. and uh, people, I think just, you know, I, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs and they are in expansion mode and I bet you that that's just something they don't consider because it is really easy to find someone else that you like. And then they say, Hey, we'd be great together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know this company or that company, or I've, you know, I've got, I'm dialed into all of these departments and these corporations in the state of Texas. And then you go to town and then all of a sudden, ouch. Yes. Yeah. Especially in the 1099 bracket, the 1099, the W2, yeah. the flow throughs, the, in each state, they all have their little, Taxes. California's got their eight hundred dollar flat fee. Massachusetts has one. Illinois, New York, Texas has a margin tax. Yeah, e even Tennessee. Tough. You know, you look at Texas and Tennessee. They don't have an income tax, but they have an excise tax or a margin tax. And mm -hmm. you're like, well, I don't have to worry about Tennessee. There's no income tax. Well, they have these other little taxes you've got to worry about now. That's right, Tennessee, and then and of course Florida uh, also uh, has yeah. uh, some pretty lucrative upfront looking tax uh, positions and homestead rules but yes they they, still they, have to pay. they used to have to pay so yeah. they're they're really on you for your sales tax and yeah. rental properties in florida where people get their beach homes and rent them they don't think about it that's right it's a different law than georgia yeah and all of a sudden they're they have to collect sales tax on the rent in their beach home in florida and they're just trying to pick up rent and they had no idea that's right that's right it was a really good idea to go in on that condo with my brother-in-law yeah <laughs> right? yeah yeah no i understand that there's something you said uh when we were uh, sort of just chatting it up here this morning before we uh, kicked off the recording about you know what you envision as what you like in terms of a new client lunch oh. You know, or I, I, and, and I, I'm a prospective client lunch, right? So yes. you're meeting someone for the first time, maybe you've had an intro call and you had some interesting ideas of how you wanted someone to have lunch with a, a, a potential accountant <laughs> and how you differentiated it from what you've envisioned as a lunch with a typical accountant. So I want to prompt you with that because I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. What I try to do is um, I'm very fortunate with what I do and I get to meet a lot of people, either clients or referrals. But we are accountants, and I, I don't know why, but people think we're boring. And, uh, you know, they think we're sitting there, and we're the guy like sits there and says, Bueller, anybody. <laughs> so we need to spice up our accounting life a little bit. And I always want, when someone meets me for lunch, a banker, insurance, financial advisor, attorney, whatever it is that we're marketing and networking with as mutual clients that we sure. have. I don't want them just to come to the lunch, yeah, it was good, Mark's a nice guy, it was a good meal. He's a CPA. He's yeah. a CPA. Yeah. I got tons of them. Whatever. Yeah. You know, move on. So I always like to try to leave them with some useful nugget, something that they can use and relate back to their clients. And I was like, I don't need to wear Superman's cape. You can. I just want to be a bullet in your arsenal. I want yeah. you to come out there and leave and say, well, I didn't know that. Call up one of your clients and say, hey, did you know you could do this? And a lot of times people don't realize that. And I, I say, if you're doing something here in Georgia... And you feel good about it. You're hiring people. You're growing. You're buying assets. You're training. You're doing something with the environment. You're, you just are doing something from a normal discussion, puts a smile on your face. There's probably a benefit for that. But the flip side is no one wants to be that smiley guy. <laughs> it's not cool to be happy for some reason. And if you're a Democrat, you're blaming the Republicans. If you're a Republican, you're blaming the Democrats. And if you're doing something good, you can't talk about it because the friend next to you wants to complain and talk. And you just are kind of sitting there. But I'm like, try to come up with stuff and be the happy guy and be the guy that says, hey, you know what? We're doing some cool things here in Georgia. Yeah. And we spent some time doing our own due diligence instead of sticking our head in the sand and just complaining about it. We talked about it. We explored ideas with other advisors. And that's where I want to be. I want to be that guy because if you're the guy that's just going to sit there and complain, I want to be the guy you're talking to because he's the client I want. He's yeah. the client that understands that you got to think outside the box. You've got to get your head out of the sand and say, I'm actually doing well. I'm doing some good things. Anyone going to help me out? Yeah. And chances are 
there you might not fit everybody in every square peg and square hole nor should you no you're right yeah. but there are things that people don't realize that wow i can benefit from that i just had to to think about it so it's a great way to approach that conversation i think people sometimes they dread meeting with professionals and and i don't want to single out just accounts i mean their attorney right what oh my god i'm going to this meeting with my attorney you know what or a potential attorney oh, this is a terrible subject i don't know what i'm going to talk you know they go in kind of all cranked up and, and set for a glass half empty conversation or at the very minimum like you say a um a conversation where they're sort of off there kind of not listening or paying attention to it they just feel like it's a necessary evil i've got to have an accountant i've got to have an attorney i love the approach because it does put you in a position of saying be excited about what you do and what you're doing and what you're accomplishing and in about the place you're living and doing it in yes right i mean george is great it's been great to me personally i you know be excited about that you know leverage it it is funny because I know a lot of other state tax people, and we all have our little, as you can imagine, super fun state tax guy meetings that everybody should attend. <laughs> right. But I do talk, we all talk about our states, and I do talk proudly about Georgia. I think we're doing things that are good. We're not perfect. There's always some things that we can tweak and do better. But we are a state. We do have taxes to pay. We do have people to pay to help run the state, and yeah. they've got to get done somehow. But if we can do it and leverage it different ways, let's do it. And um, we have some things that a lot of other states don't have. I mean, one of the low hanging fruit items that I see is training. And if you have an employee who's been with you more than 16 weeks and you train them on anything technical, you can get a tax credit for that in Georgia. And that's a good thing, you're training your employee. So you're already paying for your employee to be trained. And training takes place regardless of size of business. I mean, that's Correct. something that happens from the solopreneur all the way up to the largest corporation. Training's a necessary evil. It's something that always happens. Yes, I mean, as long as you have that one employee, and it doesn't matter, uh, we take the credits for clients of ours that are in fast food, to manufacturing, to law firms, to entrepreneurs that do stuff that I didn't even know people did. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so uh, you know, a simple example is yeah, QuickBooks. give us an example about this, yeah. QuickBooks, a lot of small businesses use QuickBooks, and they have an employee that they send to be trained on it or the the owner might train the employee so you can still take the credit even though you didn't send them to a technically a training show mm -hmm. you can still get a credit if the owner trains the employee as long as that employee's been there 16 weeks it's the owner's hourly rate the employee's hourly rate and the number of hours you trained and you can get up to five hundred dollars per class and you can get up to one thousand two hundred fifty dollars per year per employee so we've done it for several clients. And I, I, that's the other thing I like to talk about is we've done it. We've yeah. seen the money go into their pocket. It's not like I'm marketing for the state of Georgia here. Right. And I'm being paid by them and the state offers this. My clients are putting the money in their pocket. And I have a lot of small businesses and a single member owner escort. And he's got six employees. Next thing you know, he's done training. He's gotten $500 for each of them. And it's three grand. And, and three grand directly in his pocket, it's like, okay, so he just reduced his estimated payments or got a refund or something that, you know, three grand can add up. And it, to it totally can add up. I mean, now, if I see three grand laying around here, I'm grabbing it, even though, you know, this is uh, Jody's uh, <laughs> waving me off there because it's her joint. But uh, she it's might her move studio. A quick yeah, to right. grab that yeah. from you. <laughs> but I'll take it. And plus, you're not a, I love the comment, you're not a pioneer here. This is, this is proven. Yeah. Right. It's, it's yeah. day in, day out. You're not out. the first guy in, yeah. No, and people just don't realize it. So we help them capture that. When it's nice because we see it, like I said, we see it go into their pocket and we help them do it. And it's like, as you get educated in this, you become like me. You become excited about yeah. Yeah. these opportunities. And if you think I get excited, wait till you're the business owner. And the first year you might have found three grand. Now you're aware of this law. Mm -hmm. So you're cognizant of everything going on in your business and you're having people keep track of it. Next year, it could be five grand. Sure, why not? Right? And it can grow, you know, up to the max per year. But those are things you're already doing the training. You've already done it. It's not like you're just doing it for the credit. You're doing the training. You're paying the employee. You're spending time with the employee. 
double dip, capture the benefit that's going to be provided to you. And what I like about this is that they're not just being told to do something, your clients, and then walk away. You're actually educating them uh, on a strategy that they can become very good at. So if when an opportunity arises for a business owner and he or she says, oh, wait a minute, we could do this and it could be a training event for us and this is how it could benefit us as well as our uh, as our business and our and our employees, boom, they're off and they're running with it where they may not have seen that before. Yes. As opposed to just saying, Mark, here's all my receipts, you know, do some magic and get me out of this jam, right? <laughs> we do see that too. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, of course. But uh, I, lo- I love the education piece because it's a big mantra around here and, 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 you know, people can become much smarter at this. Absolutely, and it, it is about that. And we really try to take time to do it, and we see it year in, year out. We see the credits grow. We see the the client coming to us mm-hmm. earlier and more frequently saying, hey, Mark, we're running into some issues. We're going to have a big year. That's great. Then I, I, this is the other one I love. It's like, hey, i got to minimize my taxes. What can I do? Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not a big fan of just doing something. And they go, well, you know, is there anything out there I can just write off? I was like, sure. I was like, let me tell you what. I got a big fat deduction for you. It's called accounting fees. I am happy to triple my fees for you. And it's a pure write-off. You'll say 40%. And there's your deduction you're looking for. Now, there's a sales pitch. That is. How does that go over? It does. Once I say that, they get it. They realize they don't want to just write a check for the sake of writing a check. Right. At the end of the day, you're making money. It's always better to keep the 60 to 65% than write a dollar, you know, a nice accounting fee right. check right. just for the sake of the deduction. But what you got to do is try to look what you're already doing and look at what you need to do. And, you know, you're having a big year this year. You're having one next year. Maybe not. Like this year, 16, the tax rates are probably going to be higher than the president-elect Trump does what he says. We could look at a price reduction. So it's like, okay, so I want to push my income into 17. I want to take my deductions in 16. You know, those yeah. are timing issues yeah. that we had discussions with our clients on. And you've just come through that period. We did. Yeah. And we had clients that did it. And they're like, you know, and we nothing's for certain until he takes over and laws get passed. But you've got to go with your gut. You know, 16 is no worse than 17. And 17 can only be better. Right. Let's just try to defer as much as we can and push it off. You know, it just, you can't just say, I got to reduce taxes. That right. doesn't get us anywhere. It's okay. Let's have a discussion how and what you're doing and, and take it from a, an approach of, all right, I'm doing this. Like I, I go back to it again. It's just an easy example of the training. You know, Georgia has other things that they offer, hiring, buying assets, using the Savannah ports. All those things contribute to tax credits, research and development. People don't realize they're doing that. Yeah. And that's a great one because that's both a federal tax credit and a state tax credit. So for, for R&D? Yeah, for that. So you're, you're developing a new product, your new process, your new software, your new widget. If you're doing that, stop and think. Yeah, especially with the burgeoning tech industry that sits Absolutely. here in Georgia. I mean, that in itself, just the IP development has got to be... We see a ton of it. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Down at Atlanta Tech Village. Sure. Down at the ATDC at Georgia Tech. Yep. Um, and then those developing companies spawn off into other businesses. And through that, and actually through our airport, we get a lot of people that put in foreign businesses here. Right. Because it's easy to fly into. We're East Coast time zone, and we're cheaper than New York or D.C. or Philly. And we have the big airport. And now you're having international companies putting development here and stuff. And mm-hmm. we, it's... It's neat. It gives us an opportunity to see stuff that, you know, the typical, our, our image of being the boring accountant, you know, we get to see things that everyone gets to see. So it helps us with our cocktail talk. No, I love it. Let me ask you this. So since you have such a broad array of people that you service, is there one particular industry you find the most, I don't know, interesting, quirky, uh, greatest <laughs> amount of anecdotes? You, I, tell, tell me about the places where you really have had some fun breaking into and and working through with clients? Well, it's kind of an easy one for me. Okay. It's, uh, I'm a sports guy. So being in state and local taxes has gotten me the opportunity where I've been very fortunate to befriend a couple of sports agents and financial advisors. That's cool. So we've developed a nice little niche where we represent 20, 25 current or retired athletes. Oh, wow. So being the guy that grew up playing sports and realized I would never be winning a Super Bowl or a national title or anything like that and staying the weekend warrior, it it keeps you in the game a little bit. Yeah. And I, I love it. I love it when the guys come to my office. I love 
seen him on ESPN or, you know, yeah. you know, I'm in a fantasy league. And I was like, hey, you're, I lost my fantasy game because my client scored for the other team. <laughs> uh, but it's fun. And those guys are some dicey lunches. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, but it makes it fun. But with athletes, they live a different world. So they're, they do. you know, we've learned a lot working with them on the deduction of agent fees, on the fact that every game they play in another state, they have to pay tax in that state. Really? So if you play for the Hawks and they were last, well, last night, you know, the other day doesn't matter. They were in Florida, but if they go play LeBron and they're up in Cleveland, they're going to have to file an Ohio tax return and play the city of Cleveland tax. And then they go to LA and they go to Chicago and they go to New wow. York and they go to Oklahoma. All those games as a Hawks player. And they live, but they live here. They, they reside here, here. <clears throat> but wow. they're earning revenue in other States. So it's called, uh, it's called, uh, the jock tax rolls. And it hits every professional athlete. And most team athletes, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, you get paid a W-2 wage and you get a per day. It's called a duty day. And you break it out and they have to pay tax on duty days. Whereas if you're NASCAR golf, if you win the event in that state, you get paid a lot more than if you don't. Yeah. Whereas in pro sports, team sports, you get paid a salary, so your income's evenly earned. It's a lot more challenging when you're in tennis or NASCAR or wow. golf because if you win the Masters but you don't make the cut at Pebble Beach, you're going to pay a lot more tax in Georgia because you earned the revenue in Georgia and you didn't make the cut in Pebble Beach. You didn't even have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. So those are all wow. things. So when you talk about things I've learned that are fun, being a sports guy, it's – it's a lot of fun to do that and see those guys. And I'm very fortunate. Most of the guys I work with are very cool and get to know their families and some of the charitable stuff that they do. And, you know, you meet their parents or their aunts or grandparents, right. whoever is working with the athlete and helping them grow. Uh, you become friends with them. And it's like, you know, the funny one is always like the rookies because they got to buy that big rookie dinner. Right. But we deduct <clears throat> it. It's a business lunch, business dinner. So. We help them with it. So that, that from a fun cocktail talk perspective, that's what people like to talk about. From a business perspective. It's we, complex. It, it's complex. And uh, what's helped my business in it is, you know, we've been able to work with a lot of service companies, law firms, medical practices, and manufacturing, and the software developers. So this has helped me work with those guys. And people are making software, and it's just amazing. And yeah. people are making widgets and things that are incredible. And it's it gets me out there and you go walk these plants and you go meet these people and you're like, this is cool it's, stuff. It is cool stuff. I was in that business for a long time, <clears throat> the software and tech industry. <clears throat> and it never ceased to amaze me how, you know, someone could break off and do something with just a very little bit to start and create just amazing stuff and companies that would be born out of the rubble of that idea. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just flourish and then either acquire or be acquired down the road. And, it's quite an amazing thing. I and, and I think that it's really cool to see like places like you mentioned, like Atlanta Tech Village. I know some of those folks over there. And, the, of course, Georgia State – or no, Georgia Tech was <laughs> the first to really do the incubation uh, the model, ATDC I think. ATDC and Those guys have been around for a while. And just the, the stuff that's come out of there is fabulous. But it is just like almost like a, a young athlete in that they are a bit naive. They want to be their technician, right? I mean, they're going to play – my sport or I'm going to write my code yeah. and uh, all of a sudden you know my world is opened up and I've got all of this money and they can get in trouble you know and so it's really cool to hear that someone like you is on their side to help guide them and make them more efficient and to sustain and build wealth for them because they can get they can go sideways pretty quick you know young guy with a lot of dough is yeah. can be a dangerous client it, it can be and you've got a you you know you're you're still learning the world and you're out there but it's it's yeah. fun it gives me a chance to meet and work with the millennial group yes uh, and and be part of that and see see what they're up to, and it, it helps keeps me younger too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want I want to go with that a little bit because the millennial is a subject <clears throat> sort of in the forefront for me. I really um, I'm learning more and more about them and and what they do, and and I have some ideas about what's in store for the millennial generation uh, down the near road. What what are some of the insights you have of dealing with millennials and working with them? The ones that I've run into are just incredibly smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just are creating stuff and their initiative and their willingness and sitting down with them 
it's it's really cool. It brings you back a couple of pages. You know, yeah. you're like, all right, I wasn't quite doing that at your age, and I have no idea what you're doing at my age. So we have to find <laughs> some type of medium here so I can help. Translator, yeah. get in here, yeah. But they're they're always super cool. They're laid back, yeah. and they're just so quick with everything. So the millennials I've been fortunate enough to work with, they're all in technology. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting down with them, and they're like, hey, here's this app I created. And I was like, I didn't even know I needed that app, but I guess I do now that it's out there. And, right. So I didn't know I needed it. Now I see it. I kind of want it. So how does it work? And, <laughs> you know, and they just move so quickly with it. Yeah. And it's, it's fun because it's also nice when you get to go to their office. You can pretty much wear jeans or whatever you want. There's, yeah. no, there's no business casual dress code with those right. guys. Dogs are hanging out there. Uh, you it's know, a potpourri. It's it, it a bit is. of a mosh pit, isn't it? It is. There's really no walls. Everyone's just talking on their headphones, and it's like, okay, I'm going to meet with this guy. I don't have to worry about coat and tie with him. Yeah, you know, and yeah. it's it's fun. So I like going out with those guys. I like meeting them and and understanding what they're doing. And I, I think we've been able to help several of them because in their training and in their school and in their their ability to move so quick. I don't think they've taken as much time on a tax finance perspective because they focused all their energy on their product and with their friends and communicating that I don't know if a lot of times in their schooling, they've, they've taken the due diligence to do that. So when we sit with them, we're like, Hey, you know, we got to go about it this way. We can't just have another owner we can't just give your friend shares we can't just you know <laughs> the frat house uh, yeah. rules for subscription agreements yeah, yeah you can't just do that let's <laughs> i'd like i want to get you there too but let's do it the right way let's protect yours and theirs tax issues let's make sure we're not doing anything that's going to bite us later let's talk about where you want this next facebook billion dollar entity to go yeah. And make sure we're teed up in the right way so as you do get those investors as the money does come in you're aware of it. And that's kind of the role we like to try to help them play as well. Because a lot of times it's like, so yesterday you had one owner, now you've got 20 and you just decided to do it because you needed help and you didn't have any money. So you gave them ownership, but yet there's contracts and they don't quite get that. And that's where we sit down and and talk to them. I love the idea and I love the forward thinking and I love the speed, but sometimes we have to reel them in. Pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. You can't, I don't think you can treat tax and finance as fast as you treat technology yeah yeah and and you know i think that also just in in general in terms of the groundwork or the the foundation that needs to be set for both legal and financial platforms when you're building a business out you know a lot of times it's just like that i think with the older generations they may say everybody throw 50k in the kitty and we're going to go build this business and they've not written operating agreements subscription agreements any of that stuff and then down the road the marriage breaks up and everyone's going sideways and there's taxes to do and there's legal things to file and i think on the younger side it's more like what you said it's like i need help i like these people i trust them let's just i'll give each other ownership and 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 shares that have very little value right now but it it kind of is the same thing and then if marriages break up on this and then things go sideways now we've got trouble and so i think the the underlying message here is take a moment you know don't don't stop being the technician for the greatness that you're creating but take a moment do yourself and your partners a favor and set a tone that's both legal and financially correct going forward because once that genie gets out of the bottle it's nuts it it can be because technology does grow so fast yeah that you did something just to be nice or not even thinking about it to save money and then next thing down the road your technology shot out the roof and now all of a sudden you made all these other people taken in on all your hard work when i don't know if that was always the intention is for them to have that much of your profit it might be which is great but at least go into knowing what you're doing is what you want to do yeah yeah i love it Hey, so uh, I want to finish out with something we had. A, we were chatting a little bit beforehand, and you were extolling some very interesting, I guess, tax advantages and, and, and stories and so on around the film industry. And for those that live here in Georgia and listen to our uh, IRC Wealthcasts, Georgia's becoming quite the film industry. So it's not uncommon for any of us here to, you know, jog through a, uh, a movie set or to have their home shot or, or a car or some other asset be used in a movie or become an extra. 
people all over the city are experiencing this and you had some pretty interesting things to say about it. And so let's couple the two together. Talk to me about that. Okay. I, again, going back to being proud of your state, it, Georgia has done, uh, worked very hard on their film and entertainment. They have. And, and I think it's starting to pay off. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I'm sure people can Google it and find out the benefits. But if nothing else, it's provided a lot of fun for the people that live here because yeah. I think we're now the number three movie TV state behind California and New York. Is that right? Of production. Wow. Like at any given time, I think Georgia has maybe 10 or 15 movies. And the way I understand it from the guys at Digital Entertainment is because we have everything. We have a city. We have the country. We have mountains. We have oceans. We have lakes. We, we have, have lakes, woods. Yeah. We have all the landscape that needs to be used right there in one state makes sense but the other thing is the georgia legislature has pushed it and it has pushed the tax benefits of making movies and digital entertainment tv shows music videos films so yeah i go for a run and i'm running through a movie set like once every four or five months it's, yeah it's amazing my wife actually has been an extra in four different movies just last year wow so it's it's pretty fun to see that and then you see the movies come out and uh, she hasn't had any words yet we're waiting for her to get her sag card <laughs> <laughs> but um hopefully that'll be coming but from my perspective it's huge and the reason it's huge is because the tax credits that are being created so i'll give a quick simple example that yeah, movies do. that are made here that use georgia headquartered businesses and georgia residents and Georgia employees are eligible for a Georgia tax credit. So those credits are made by the movie industry. So for example, big movie guy in town, Tyler Perry. And I'm making numbers up here just for a theoretical example. Sure. So don't quote me on any of the numbers. Just this right. is all theory. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, yeah, and Tyler's not here to defend himself. He so. is not. Yeah. He is not. Um, if he does listen to the IRC, hello, Tyler. That uh, would be pretty cool. Yeah. We'll be excited about that. Uh, but um, essentially, using rough <laughs> estimated numbers, if he makes a movie that costs him about a million dollars and he uses all Georgia-based headquartered businesses and Georgia-based employees and the lighting's from Georgia, the catering's from Georgia, the, the costumes are from Georgia, whatever it is, is all done here, he's eligible for a tax credit. And the tax credit is 20% of the cost of those expenses. Wow. And if Tyler Perry decides to put a little Georgia peach at the end of the movie credits, so anyone who gets stuck talking during a movie and you end up watching the credits to the end, you'll see a peach at the end of it. Sure. That credit goes from 20 to 30%. So on a million dollar movie, he can create a $300,000 credit. Has not cost him anything. He spent the million. So he's like, great. So what happens is Tyler Perry, and I don't know all the behind the scenes, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But it would essentially sell those $300,000 credits to Georgia tax credit brokers. Those credit brokers will write Tyler Perry a check for X dollars. He's happy. He got the money. Right. The brokers are happy. They have something to sell. The brokers then call guys like me up and say, hey, Mark, I've got tax credits. Let me know if your clients want to buy them. And what that means is I go to a client and one of my clients has to pay Georgia $20,000 of tax. Regardless of all our tax planning, all our tax credits we took, all the training credits and R&D credits and everything else we took for him, at the end of the day, he still owes him 20 grand. So we go one more notch down and we contact the credit brokers. And it's, it's kind of funny because I treat it like I'm walking into their store and it's like, <laughs> hey, I need 20,000 of 2016 Georgia tax credits. He goes, great, Mark. I got them at 90 cents on the dollar. I write him a check for $18,000. My client saves two grand at the end of the day. Nice. So my client's happy. He saved two grand. The credit brokers are happy because it created the job and they can do it. Tyler Perry's happy because he just got money for creating a credit. And the state of Georgia's happy because he provided a hundred million dollars of expenses and made a movie here that he would not have made. Right. So the effect of it is all can all be pretty worthwhile. So that's how we see the credits. It's kind of funny because my client's like, how can I save money as we talked about earlier? Right. And it goes back to not writing a check. Or if you do write a check, as in this case, make it be less than what you need it. And it's, it's kind of funny because they need help. And I was like, well, I got a guy. And it's like all of a sudden I got this guy that <laughs> sells credits. And right. you're entering a new realm of, of discussions. But um, my clients love it. And it's a pretty safe, low-risk, 
credit. Right. Because A, the film credits have to be audited by a CPA firm. So as a CPA firm, we like it too, because you know, certain CPA firms are going out and they're auditing Tyler Perry's credits and that creates for us. So and they're clean. They're it's clean. A, yeah. Yeah. And it, they're pretty much no risk on it. And it's just like, well, if I can save you two grand in that example, why not? Yeah. And that's, that's how it works. So there is the benefit of the film credit. So when you're out there running and driving or your wife's going to a movie, Note you're contributing to somebody else's tax credit at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to spur you on to get into the movie industry in some way. And, and these credits are for everybody. They're not just businesses. They're individuals. If you're a business owner and you own an S corp or a partnership, the entity doesn't pay the tax. You do. So you as the individual, as Joe the individual, will go out and buy those individual credits. If you have a corporation... You can go out and your corporation pays tax. At the C-Corp level, your C-Corporation can go buy those credits as well. Wow. So it's not, it's not one of those things where a lot of people say, oh, that doesn't apply to me, or I can't do that. I'm not in the film industry. Going yeah. back to the guys that always think down, be the right. guy that smiles. Yeah. Be the guy that says, you know what? This is for me. I'm going to go save my two grand while you complain about it. I think that's a great way to finish this out because it kind of brings us full circle, Mark. I, I love the I love the creativity of it, and I love the positioning of yeah, be the guy that smiles about this. You know, this is good stuff. You know, why why look at it as being a penalty when in fact you can use it to your advantage and to your business's advantage? Absolutely. Um, just yeah, if they're going to hand it to you, take it. Yeah, and smile about it and move on. And, and move on. And a lot of states have certain benefits. It's not just Georgia. And, you know, there are states that have other benefits similar to us. But uh, Georgia, I think, has done a decent job to try and help. Again, not perfect. I'm sure there's people out there that might complain. But if they're going to hand you something, take, take what you've got and take it and run. You know, while we've been somewhat parochial in our discussions today, you know, surrounding Georgia, because that's an area of expertise for you, among others, if you're outside of Georgia, that to seek out someone like Mark that is uh, sales and uh, state and local tax geared and, and schooled up on so that they can help you with this and you can receive the same sort of positioning that we're talking about here in Georgia today. And I think that, you know, be aggressive and, and be protective of your business in a positive way and take advantage of some of this low hanging fruit as we have talked about. Okay, Mark, tell us how we uh, find you. Uh, yeah, please feel you. free to reach me at my office at 770-499-7100. Or you can reach me at kaneanddavid.com. That's C-A-I-N-D-A-V-I-D.com. Or you can go to my own webpage called Turkey and Taxes. I know that's a little bit of an odd name. <laughs> but We uh, haven't had one of those. All no, right. <laughs> no, not many people have, but there is significance to it. So that will entice you to... Uh, go to the website and see what it's about by reading it, and it'll be explanatory at you there. Very cool. Thank you again very much for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Appreciate your time with us and really enlightening us all on this one. This was, uh, this was a good one, so I appreciate you. Thank you. With that said, I will close out another episode of IRC Wealthcast. I'd like to thank you all for sticking with us today. I think this has been a very informative and very interesting way to look at taxation at the state and local tax level and the opportunities that sit out there for you. Mark, thank you. Uh, folks, IRC Wealth is located at ircwealth.com. Please come out there and visit us. We produce original content every week in the form of a blog or podcast. We are also on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and check us out on those channels as well. This podcast is also available on iTunes. So you can go out there and subscribe. And if you've got something you want us to talk about, we'll bring in the appropriate trusted advisor like Mark Fishman here, and we will, uh, we will chat it up. So thanks again. Thanks.